Does this look familiar to you? Code where you are checking for null all the time? Well, sometimes it's expected for a value to be null, but there is a better way to handle this and that is using the null object pattern. This pattern is one of the simplest because its job is to do really nothing. The null object has all of the methods and the properties that are expected to be on the object if it was not null. If it is null, it's still going to have all of the methods and all of the properties, they are just not going to do anything. To better understand this, let's take a look at a simple example of creating some items and an inventory manager. I have an item class which has two properties, it has the item name, item description, then it has some function to eat the item because we'll be working with some edible items, then we can get the description of the item and play some sound. In the inventory manager I'm storing the inventory capacity. Based on this I'm then creating an array of the items and I'm initializing them. For start I'm setting all of them to null. So then when we let's say click the item or when we hover over it, you see that every time we need to check if the selected item is not null. Right now we are checking for the null only in two places so it's definitely not too bad, but you can imagine as if we would be using the item in multiple functions then each time you need to check if it is null or not. So using the null object pattern will help us exactly with this, so that we can avoid all the excessive null checks. And before we can create the null object itself, we need another layer of abstraction, because each of the items will either be just an item or it will be null item. So for this example, I made an I edible interface because I'm working mostly with edible items. You can see that here I have all of the methods and the properties that should be on each edible item, so now I can simply implement the interface into the item class. Let's now create the null item class. This one is going to implement the interface as well and it's just not going to do anything. When we try to eat it, it's not going to do anything. When we play the sound, it's also not going to do anything. And in case of the get description function, in this case we actually have to return something. So returning null would not be very wise because then we are just pushing the problem further into the chain. So it would not return null when we get the item, but it would return now when we try to get the description. So instead, I set the description as no item selected. Now in the inventory manager, I'm not going to be storing an array of items, instead I'm going to store the i edibles, so that then we can actually assign null value to each of the items. And when I'm initializing array of the edibles, I'm not going to be setting it to null, instead I will set it to new null item. So this will mean that any item we get from the array will never be null, unless we explicitly set it to null. So for this reason we can remove all of the null checks, because we know it's never really going to be null. We'll either get an item or the null item, on both of which we can call the functions that we need. So now you can see that all the functions are much simpler, because we are not checking for null. And as it is with all the design patterns, you should be using them only in some cases where it is really beneficial. So only because you are checking for null somewhere doesn't mean that you should be using the null object pattern. In case of the inventory example, it's only going to work well if it is really expected that each of the functions may not really do anything. But if there is a function, let's say set current item slot or something on each of the items, and we expect it's going to change the slot, and then it doesn't do it, it's probably going to be quite confusing and hard to debug. Let's now take a look at a quick summary and then I have two more examples for you which seem like they are using the null object pattern, but they are not so using it in the classic way where we are creating a new class. In short, when should you use the null object pattern? I think it is safe to use it when the null value is expected and the default behavior, which means it's not going to do anything, is harmless. And when should you not use it? I think that you should not use it when the missing reference or null value indicates a bug or misconfiguration, because then when it doesn't do anything, it doesn't really tell you that there is a bug. And you should probably also not use it when the system is critical for the application, such as some kind of game manager or health system, which probably should not have null values. And what are the pros and cons of this pattern? It's definitely going to prevent the excessive null checks in the code, it may also help you to avoid the null reference exceptions, and additionally it also forces you to create abstractions, such as the interfaces or abstract classes, so this way overall your code will be more clean and extensible. And what are the cons of this pattern? It definitely can make the code harder to debug, because it may fail silently, which means that when a value is null, it's simply not going to do anything. We won't get a warning, we won't get a debug that log, unless you explicitly edit there, it's really not going to do anything. Let's take a look at another example, which I think is quite interesting, because it's not using the null object pattern kind of directly, you don't really need to create a new null object class for it. And the example is with actions, so let's say that you have some on-player died action, 
and when there are no functions subscribed to it and you would call the action, it would give you an error. So that's why most of the time you see the question mark and the invoke, which is simply checking if the action is now, if it is, it's not going to call it, if it is not now, it's going to call it as usual. And the way that we can make an action use the null object design pattern is that from start or on initialization, we are just going to assign it an empty function. This means that always there will be at least one function and that is the empty function subscribed to the action, so we can then call it without checking whether it is now. And another interesting example I think that I will probably never need to use, I just found it interesting, is using coroutines. So you may have a variable storing a coroutine which could be null for whatever reason, and then if you need to call it, you will still need to check if it is not equal to null. So instead, how we can make it use the null object design pattern is that you will really create just an empty coroutine that's not going to do anything, then when you initialize the variable storing the coroutine, you can just assign it the empty routine from default, and then you can either reassign it to some other coroutine, or you can start it this way and it's not going to throw any errors. So those two last examples are really additional, I just found them interesting. And there is one shorthand about which I learned just today, which is that if you are checking whether a regular class is not now, you don't even need to be typing not equal to now, you can simply write the variable itself. But as I mentioned, this only works with regular c -sharp classes, so it's not going to work with interfaces and so on. But still, it may be a useful shorthand if you are checking for now all the time. You can also use this, even though I don't prefer it, because usually when I see this, I would expect that the item is a boolean, but it also works for now. And this is all for the null object pattern. Down in the comments, you can let me know how often you use this pattern, or whether there are some other patterns you would like me to make tutorials about as well. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can drop them down into the comments as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next videos. Bye!